Good evening, I'm Joe Nye, Dean of the Kennedy School of Government, and on behalf of President Neil Rudenstein and everyone here at Harvard University, I want to welcome you to the forum. Tonight, it's our great honor to host the Mayor of Cambridge, the Honorable Anthony Coluccio, for the State of the City Address. I'd also like to welcome all the members of the Cambridge City Council, the School Committee, and many other dignitaries from Cambridge who've joined us here tonight. I've been a member of the Cambridge community for 40 years, and I've witnessed how this great city has grown and flourished. I love this city, and we're all proud to be part of it. I offer a special welcome to the citizens of Cambridge, and we're glad to take advantage and have you take advantage of the great things that Harvard has to offer, whether it's listening to forums here, or whether it's attending lectures around campus, or taking advantage of the musical and theater performances that we have. As Dean of the Kennedy School of Government, a school of public policy, I want each of you to know that the Kennedy School stands ready to offer its help and energies to the city. Please don't hesitate to contact us if there's anything that we can do to be useful. And now to introduce Mayor Galluccio, I'd like to present Mr. Robert Healy, well known to all of you. Mr. Healy has served as Cambridge City Manager since 1981, following seven years as the Deputy City Manager. Um, Thank you very much, Dean, and uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, this evening, I expect a celebration and a challenge, a celebration of the good works of our collective government in the city of Cambridge, and a further challenge to that government to do even more in continuing to make Cambridge a premier city in the nation. It is my great pleasure to introduce Mayor Anthony Galluccio for the State of the City Address. Thank you, Mr. Manager. I want to thank the Kennedy School of Government and Dean Nye for hosting this very special event. And first, let me say that it's wonderful to look out uh, onto our entire community this evening. I see uh, members of law enforcement. I see youth workers in our audience, members of our nonprofit community, uh, leadership from our local church community, members of organized labor, department heads, uh, members of our city staff and school staff, and now tonight, I know this will truly be a great community celebration. Uh, I would like to first introduce uh, some colleagues in government that, that have joined us. And I'd like to start with members of our state delegation. And I'll proceed to read the names uh, so that we can move through. We have a number of uh, guests joining us. I'd like to welcome uh, this evening State Senator uh, Stephen Tolman, uh, Senator Robert Travellini, Representative Paul DeMarcus, Representative Tim Toomey, and Representative Alice Wolf making up our state delegation. I'd like to welcome State Senator Stephen Lynch, uh, Middlesex County Register of Deeds Gene Brune, and Register of Probate John Bonomo. I would also uh, take an opportunity right now uh, to recognize uh, our university partners that have uh, joined with us this evening. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, President Rudenstein uh, for being here with us uh, this evening, uh, who has been a friend and an ongoing partner with the City of Cambridge. Mr. President, thank you for your presence here this evening. I'd like to welcome Paul Paravano, representing Mass Institute of Technology, and Paul Karoff from Lesley University. I'd also like to welcome Bishop Bowles. Thank you, Bishop, for being here. And I want to represent all the church leadership that is with us this evening. You represent the lifeblood of our community, and we appreciate you being here with us this evening. I'd now like to recognize my colleagues in government uh, who are here with us, and I want to thank all of you for standing by the State of the City Address. I want to thank you for your support tonight, and I also want to thank you for your input into this address. Uh, I want to thank both bodies, the school committee and the city council, for working so hard to come together around goals and objectives. I think you'll find that those goals and objectives are clearly stated uh, in this address, and I hope that uh, you will be pleased. I'd like to thank you all for your input. I'd like to recognize city council, city, excuse me, Vice Mayor David Marr, City Councilor Kathy Bourne, City Councilor Jim Browdy, City Councilor Henrietta Davis, City Councilor Marjorie Decker, 
City Councilor and former Mayor Ken Reeves, City Councilor Michael Sullivan, and City Councilor and State Representative Tim Toomey. From our school committee, From our school committee, I'd like to welcome our Vice Chair, Denise Simmons, members Fred Fantini, Joe Grassi, Alice Turkel, Nancy Walser, and Susanna Seagott. I'd like to take a, a special opportunity right now to welcome our Superintendent of Schools. Uh, Superintendent D'Alessandro is the hardest working person that I've ever met. Superintendent, I thank you for your leadership for our school system. I thank you for your work to build consensus around improving our public schools. Keep up the good work, and we appreciate you being here tonight for your support. At this time, I'd also like to take an opportunity to thank the city manager, who for 20 years uh, has led this great city of Cambridge. Mr. Manager, you've led this city uh, with the most paramount ethical character and a pride that shows through in so many of the, su the successes that we'll talk about this evening. Mr. Manager, thank you for all you've given to the city of Cambridge. As all of you know, this city is a city of unlimited potential. This city is made up of neighborhoods. The neighborhoods are the heart and soul of this community. Our history of one is, so, of, is one of social equality and fighting for fairness. Our history is what keeps us going. It, it's what gives us faith going forward into the future. Tonight is a community celebration. And I think that you can be proud of many of the, of the accomplishments that we have made as a community. But at the same time, you will hear some challenges. And I think that Cambridge has become the great city that it has become because we continuously put pressure on ourselves to be an even better city. And as we proceed with caution, cognizant of our challenges, we need to all know that coming together as a community to face these challenges will be what's, what gets us over these hurdles and into the next generation. The areas tonight that I'll focus on are housing, fiscal and development policy, health care, youth services, and education. There is no area in our city's work that I think that we can be more proud of than our work around affordable housing. The city of Cambridge, since 1995, has allocated $22.5 million in local money to affordable housing. That is the single largest contribution of local dollars going towards affordable housing than any other city in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Through a cooperative effort, and I see many of the nonprofits, representatives from HUD, representatives of the affordable housing community that are here tonight, we have been able to preserve 1,300 of our expiring use units, privately owned but federally subsidized units that are in threat of losing their affordability. Because of a community response, we've saved 1,300 of those units. Over 80% of those units will remain affordable going into the future. That is something to be very proud of. They're an integral part of this community. The City Council, through its leadership, took an aggressive stand to enact one of the strongest inclusionary zoning ordinance in this country. We now require large projects to have between 10 and 15 percent affordable housing as a component of residential developments. That ordinance has already created 100 new units of affordable housing in this city. This ordinance alone has the potential to create another 500 units of affordable housing over the next five years. That's an amazing number for permanently affordable units. I want to applaud the Community Development Department and the City Council for taking that aggressive step. Another area that I would like to talk about tonight is the City's leadership, both the Planning Board, the City Administration, and the City Council's push towards mixed-use development. Mixed-use development means that when commercial development uh, gets proposed, the city's immediate response through land use policies and planning board process and city council is to ensure that a part of that development will be, will be affordable housing. Tonight in the audience, we have Hector Acevedo. Hector, will you stand up for me tonight? How you doing, pal? 
Good to see you. Hector, <laughs> Hector Acevedo lives in one of 91 affordable units at University Park in a permanently affordable unit. Hector's mother, who works at Harvard, incidentally, doesn't have to worry about increased rents anymore. She can make sure that Hector studies well while he's at Cambridge Ringe and Latin. Hector has told me that he's going on to BU to come back to be a teacher in the Cambridge public school system. Hector, congratulations. We're going to talk to him about Leslie University, don't worry. 15% of this city's housing stock is protected for low-income residents. It's a significant number, permanently affordable rental units. Where we have a challenge is around protecting moderate income and working income families and residents to stay here in the city. Those who are, are above low income qualifications but simply cannot afford the rents and the purchase prices in this community. City of Cambridge and the City Council has worked hard to put 350 residents each year through our first time home buyer program. Tonight in the audience is an old friend, Olga Espina. Olga, where are you? Stand up, Olga. Say hello. <laughs> Olga, Olga, her husband Edgar, and her two children, Julian in 10th grade and Laura in 6th grade, worried about their rents. They lived in subsidized housing in North Cambridge. After participating in the city's first time home buyer program, and after three to four years of waiting, Olga would like me to remind us, she does now have an affordable ownership townhouse, which used to be a rundown worker cottage on Ringe Avenue in North Cambridge, just a stone's throw away from where she was raising her family in a rental unit. Now Olga owns. Now Olga and Ed Kid can worry about their children's education without worrying about rental, rental increases. Olga wants me to remind you that she waited four years and that there are hundreds of people that could be, be in a position to buy. Olga, thank you for being here tonight. You represent the work that we have before us. The, wor the work of getting funding sources for above 80% of median, which is the, what the federal government considers really to be f eligible funding levels, takes institutional partnerships. Tonight I'd like to praise Harvard University for taking the first major step towards contributing to the city's uh, housing crisis by coming up with a loan program to Cambridge and Boston for $10 million for each community. That money is flexible and it allows us to help residents like Olga who may not qualify under traditional programs, but by Cambridge standards are people that we want to keep in this community. We applaud Harvard University for taking that first step and we look forward to your future commitment in the, in the area of affordable housing. Thank you. I'd like to state some final challenges in the area of housing. Our universities, who we treasure, who are an integral part of this community, have exerted some pressures on our housing market. I think we would all agree. Uh, our major universities are housing uh, less than 50% of their graduate students. That presents an enormous pressure on our housing market. We continue to urge the universities of this city to house your students. We know you can do that with minimal impact to our neighborhoods. We will continue to work with you to achieve that goal. My final challenge is to landlords. There are 420 landlords currently accepting Section 8 certificates in this city. I want to thank each and every one of you. Locating Section 8 housing in this city has become a very difficult task. The House, Cambridge Housing Authority, on a daily basis with the Multi-Service Center and other housing advocates, fight relentlessly to get, get places for those Section 8 certificates to be housed. We are currently utilizing 84% of our Section 8 certificates, a good number representing a serious struggle by housing advocates in the city. I want to thank those 420 landlords for being part of our community, for understanding that a community requires economic mix. I tonight ask landlords outside of the 420 number to step forward, 
take a Section 8 certificate. The rents are reasonable. You will be making a committee, community stand together. You will be standing together with the City of Cambridge and our community advocates to ensure that we maintain the economic mix that this city so desperately needs to maintain. I urge landlords to come forward and thank those who have, made, who have come forward and served Section 8 residents. They're an important part of this community. As I move into public investment and development, I'd like the city to reflect back uh, on the early 80s, a time when, in Cambridge, our bond rating was suspended. Seems like a long time ago today, but it wasn't that long ago. It prevented the city from making very important capital improvements to continue to invest in a long-term plan, and everything stopped. Today, because of sound management, we have a AAA bond rating. We have a free cash reserve of $20 million. This money enables us to move forward with important public investment projects. Across this city, you see parks and recreational areas being renovated. In the last few years, we've renovated two more grammar schools. We'll have a new track facility and a new Russell Field, and we want to applaud the efforts around Magazine Beach. The City Council, with its great leadership, has come forward and started the first open space acquisition fund in the, city's hunt, in the city's history. It's already making a difference. We're moving forward to having a, a state-of-the-art youth center in every neighborhood. We will have a new water treatment facility opening this spring that will serve residents for the next centuries and create more affordable and better quality water for this city. We will also be mo moving forward after, since the city council has allocated money and cited a brand new state-of-the-art library that will serve our residents for the next hundred years. Congratulations. <laughs> the money that uh, we have invested goes hand in hand with money that we allocate for strong city services, which we're very proud of. Tonight, as I look out and see the public safety officials in the audience, we as a community should stand together and be proud of what we've accomplished. This year, again, we've increased funding for public safety. We've put more police officers and more firefighters on the streets of the city. Despite the fact that this year, crime was up from 1999 by 1%. Crime is at an all-time low. Crime is down 35% from 10 years ago. We've held that number over the last three years. With the community policing efforts of this city, the leadership of our police officers, the work of local neighborhood uh, crime advocates, those who are working uh, every day on crime patrols and crime watches, we will continue to keep those crime numbers down. I want to thank those who have been active in your communities to make sure that people are communicating around the area of crime. I'd also like to thank uh, Ronnie Watson, the police commissioner, our city manager, and our city council for taking a lead on the issue of racial profiling. The issue of racial profiling in community and police relations and youth relations is not a, are not problems that we're immune from in the city of Cambridge. Cambridge needs to be a demonstrated leader in this area. We appreciate your leadership in this area, and you will continue to have my support. We have also with us our Cambridge Fire Department. I'd like to welcome new Chief Reardon, who is with us tonight. I'd like to thank Chief Fitzgerald for many years of dedicated service to the city of Cambridge as well. Tonight, I'm proud to announce that the Cambridge Fire Department has re received a Class 1 rating given by the insurance uh, industry to for a few fire departments across this country. After a winter where there were several major fires, because of the professionalism and training of this fire department, we had no fatalities, and each fire was handled with minimal pain for our residents, followed by a community response to those fire victims, which is not only handled by the fire department, but by the multi-service center and our human service agencies. We appreciate you being part of that community response. Keep up the good work. Applause 
As we move forward in the area of public safety, I would urge both the police and the fire department to be cognizant of the fact that our young people, along with young people like Hector who want to go on to be teachers, need to be sure that our city will be welcoming to them to come back and become police and fire officials. We need diverse young people who understand this city to come back and serve in public safety ranks. We need to continuously remind our young people that their services are needed and appreciated. I look forward to working with you to increase recruitment from this local community in the important public safety branches of our city. As we move forward, I would like to, to stress again, our city services without question are excellent. We must recognize that funding those services uh, can be difficult. Expectations of our residents are high, and they should be high. We are thankful to have a diversified tax base. Two-thirds of our tax revenues come in through the commercial community in Cambridge. That's important because residential taxpayers only have to bear one-third of the burden of, ta of the tax revenue burden. Cambridge, in the city of Cambridge, has the lowest residential tax rate in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which keeps the burden off homeowners who cannot afford to continuously pay high taxes, and it preserves the economic base of working and middle-income homeowners in this city. We appreciate that rating. We also recognize uh, that with a flourishing business community, which we have to be cognizant of, is providing not only cutting-edge health care advances and technological advances for not only the state and this country, but the world. But we also have to be cognizant of our residential neighborhoods. I'm confident that there's a way to do that. We are all proud of our commercial sector. We're proud of our world leadership around issues of health care and technology. And we're proud that those, those commercial sectors have flourished here. It hasn't happened accidentally. We have been a part of that. As we go forward, we also mu must recognize that the commercial sector, our partners and our neighbors can do more. As we go forward, I would ask that the, that the city business leaders take, take part in a Blue Ribbon Commission, a commission that would develop a technical education program for our community and our high school, and also develop adult education programs so that our residents can take advantage of this wonderful new economy in the city of Cambridge. I would also ask that the commercial sector think about the city's leadership around issues of fair wages, around issues of compassionate benefits, and follow the city's example in reaching out to our community. And the business community and the university community will treat our residents with open arms. Because at times it seems like the business community of the city is a far off land for many of the residents that have been here for a number of years. We need to integrate this new economy to benefit the residents of the city of Cambridge. We look forward to working with you to ensure that that happens. <laughs> While we respect the business community, our responsibility is to our neighborhoods. I'd like to praise the City Council this evening for taking the ma first major step towards ensuring that development that goes forward goes forward with a reasonable view to the neighborhoods of the city, with a process that involves neighborhood input, where professional planners can be involved and make recommendations. The City of Cambridge passed the IPOP control ordinance, which ensures review of large projects. The City Council also passed the Vehicle Trip Reduction Ordinance that ensures that issu issues of traffic demand are considered along with every major, uh, major project that goes on in the city. We appreciate the business community, but we need to let the business community also know that major projects will not go forward without community input and a say from our neighborhoods. Our neighborhoods will be here forever. They have to be protected. One of our challenges as a community going forward will be deciding what this community looks like. We as a city council, over the next months, will we'll face a challenge of developing a land use policy 
that respects reasonable development but protects our neighborhoods. I'm confident that we can achieve that goal. We appreciate the important business partners in this community. And I would say that uh, for those in the community who may have considered Cambridge to be anti-development, well, I would submit to you today uh, that the groundbreakings that take place on a, on a bi-weekly basis in the city of Cambridge reflect that this city is not anti-development, but we do require that when development goes forward, it's reasonable, and reasonable developments that include our community, that look at things like affordable housing, that look at open space, and that look to integrate into our communities will go forward in the city of Cambridge. We should all be proud of that. The next area that, I, that I'd like to briefly discuss is health care. Cambridge is unique in many ways, and one of those ways is the city of Cambridge uh, has been unafraid to go into areas that local governments traditionally have not taken responsibility for. Affordable housing, as I've talked about, is one of those. The other area that shines through is health care. Nationally and across this country, health care is in great crisis. People cannot afford to be sick in this country. One in five nursing homes are about to close in this Commonwealth. We in Cambridge, thanks to, thanks to the long-term vision of our city council, who wanted to ensure that our residents had a long-term health care network where they wouldn't have to worry about their financial resources, could be able to go and get the help and the health care that they needed regardless of their financial situation. Our city council, along with our city manager, who had this vision a long time ago and, had sent, and has sent us on the course to the future uh, to provide health care, and our leader of health care, John O'Brien, who's here with us tonight, who... Having navigated difficult waters, the city of Cambridge has put you, John, on a course where we hope you'll be insulated uh, from the, the health care crisis in this country. And John, we all hope that at some day, the rest of the country will, will look around and see Cambridge as exemplary in this area. And the rest of the country will follow the leadership of you and the city manager and the city council. And every city in the country will be able to provide affordable health care and free health care for every resident who needs it. We applaud your work. We thank you for your leadership. I also wanted to take an opportunity to applaud the City Council and the City Administration. Not only does our health care network provide health care and basic necessities for those who need it, in Great Cambridge tradition, our health care network has been unafraid to reach out to groups that in traditional society have not been served. Those who suffer from mental illness, those who suffer from alcohol and drug abuse and AIDS. We have taken responsibility for those residents. Cambridge should be proud of that. The final area that, that I will cover tonight is youth services and education. I can stand before you this evening as mayor and say with confidence that Cambridge cares about its children. I want to thank the Human Service Agencies, the Kids Council, our school department for making sure that young people are a priority. Thank you. I have some good news to report tonight. 85,000 meals were served to children this year in the city of Cambridge. The school department has started a new pilot program for school breakfasts in grammar schools in the city. The Mayor's Summer Youth Employment Program, as supported by the City Council, is up 25%, serving over 500 young people last summer. We've created the Mayor's Youth Council to hear from young people, to talk to young people on their terms about how this city serves them and how we can better understand their needs. We need to do a better job of listening to our young people, and we will. We've, I'm proud to announce that we've increased funding again for community schools, important after-school programs, youth centers, early childhood education, and child care programs, a number of areas that cities sometimes can't take on, but the city of Cambridge has for our young people. 
I also want to mention tonight the city's literacy effort. The literacy effort, which is part of the agenda for children under the Kids Council, through the leadership of the superintendent and our school committee, has chosen an area that our young people would move forward in, in one of the most important educational areas that we can think of, literacy and reading. This initiative shows that when people from across city departments and political lines get together and focus and set a goal and send that message through staff and through principals and through this entire community that literacy is important and that reading is important from children to families that we can make a difference. The literacy effort has shown increases in literacy in the city since 1997. We have much work to do. This area should demonstrate that when our community comes together and sends a message, we make gains. We appreciate that effort around literacy. Congratulations. The final area that, that I will discuss tonight is education, an area that's near and dear to, to our hearts. And I think all of us would agree, Cambridge's public school system is the centerpiece of our city. It's an area out of the areas discussed tonight that I feel we face the major challenges. And I think we all need to come together as a community to face them. We need to be cognizant of the fact that while excellent things are going on in our public schools, and you will not walk in or leave a public school in this city without a good feeling, I can assure you that, and you won't see chaos, you won't see a lack of order. In fact, you'll be, your breath will be taken away by our young people. You'll see the energy and the hope and the faith that they have in us, in their hearts. You'll see it in their eyes. And you'll leave a better person. And so we all struggle to wonder, then why? Why is our performance not where it should be? We have to recognize the fact that standardized tests are not fair. I think we could all agree on that. We also have to recognize as a community that standardized tests don't go away. And whether we like it or not, our young people will be measured by these exams. So we as a community owe a response to our young people. And we owe them leadership around these issues. Regardless of what standardized measure that you look at, between 15, approximately 15 and 30 percent of our students fail or perform below grade level on any given standardized exam. We don't need to argue over which exam is the right exam. What we need to recognize is our students need to perform at a higher magnitude if, if every student is going to go on to succeed in this society. We should also recognize that class and race and which program you attend is a major issue still in this system. Despite an integrated school system, we have major challenges around economic balance. In Cambridge, 71% of students can be performing above grade level in, in reading. At another school, just 16% performing above grade level. You think about that disparity. We can do better to balance our schools in the city of Cambridge, and we will. I want to, I want to applaud the high school community, my alma mater, Cambridge Ringe and Latin. Cambridge Ringe and Latin. Yeah. Cambridge Ringe and Latin had the highest increase in SAT taking in the country, meaning the highest increase of those students who took the SAT exam out of any school in the country. I'd also, I'd also pleased to report that scores were up last year, 15 and 16 percent on verbal and math. That's an increase. We should applaud it. We as city leaders expect the most from our young people, and we expect the most from our schools. You should understand that, that context when I say that seven, only, still only 77 percent of our students are taking the SATs. We cannot rest until every student at Cambridge Ringe and Latin and in our public schools takes the PSAT exam and the SAT exam. We also have to recognize, while we applaud increased participation 
It's the only way to increase scores. We also have to recognize that we are still performing below state and national averages. We can do better. As a community, we have to come together around our young people. I want to applaud our, uh, the Cambridge Ridge and Latin School uh, for setting new goals, for setting new expectations for our students and coming together as a community. Thank you. I, I, think, I think we could all agree that money isn't the issue for our schools. We're spending more per pupil than any city in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, any community in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We have excellent facilities. Our average class size is about 18. The one area that we know we can make a difference is quality teaching. We must maintain and hold on to the experienced and quality teachers that this system has, that, has com that have committed their lives to this system. We also have to recognize that over the next five years, 350 teachers will be eligible for early retirement. Think about that number. Think about the historical opportunity that we have as a city to bring an influx of new young people into our schools that understand our community, that understand our young people, that understand what it takes to succeed in today's society. I'd like to introduce to you tonight Rhonda Green and Dan Ouso. Rhonda and Dan. Rhonda is a teacher at the new Maynard Fletcher Academy. She grew up in the city of Cambridge. She attended Cambridge Ridge and Latin High School. Dan is a teacher at Cambridge Ridge and Latin High School. He too grew up in the city of Cambridge and attended Cambridge Ridge and Latin. I've seen both of these teachers and the impact that they have on our classrooms. Their expectations are realistic, but their hearts are open. They understand our young people and they expect nothing less of excellence because they know that our children will need it to succeed. Rhonda and Dan, we appreciate you coming back to lead our young people. We need more people like you to come back into our schools. We applaud you tonight. I'd, I'd next like to introduce Mary Nien, Lauren Peters, Eddie Simone, and Kenny Rogers. In the early 1900s in this city, our economy was predominantly manufacturing. It's why many of, our, many of our families came from other countries or came from the South to work in this area. Today, less than 7% of our economy represents manufacturing. Our economy has completely changed. A recent report shows that one in four of our students would be likely candidates based on our demographics to be in technical education. Right now, we have less than 50 students in major concentration of technical study at our high school. These four students went to Minuteman Technical High School because they understood this economy and they understand what it takes to succeed in our economy. They as eighth graders took the initiative to choose a course of path that they thought would make them more uh, enabled to succeed in this economy. I applaud you for understanding your, the world around you. I applaud you for taking the initiative to send a message to this city's leadership that our young people deserve the opportunities around technical education. Frederick Ringe, when began Ringe Technical High School, was a national leader in technical education. The city never made massive, re massive reinvestment in technical education, and technical education fell, fell prey to political crossfire in this city. But our young people will bring us back to where we need to be. They've sent us a message. 59 students have sent that message loud and clear. And we, as a city of Cambridge, will, with the help of the business community and the universities of this city, restore a comprehensive technical education system in the city of Cambridge. I should mention, while I was trying to avoid uh, taking algebra, these students were picking concentrations like Biotechnical uh, Academy. Uh, Mary is in Biotechnical Academy. Lauren is in Biomedical Manufacturing. 
Eddie Simone is in auto mechanics. Kenny Rogers is in drafting, representing the new economy and the economy that will persist forever. These young people know there are many different paths to success. We need to pave the way for all those paths. Thank you for being here. John Kennedy in 1962 at the State of the Union Address said that a child miseducated is a child lost. We cannot lose children in the city of Cambridge. Tonight with us are representatives from our university community and over the last several months, the superintendent, the school committee, and with a strong message from the city council and the city administration, have conducted a series of meetings around elevating our current partnership with Harvard University MIT and Lesley College into what would be a working group that would take on an accountability for different parts of this school system. We'd like to elevate the partnership to a sense of responsibility for our schools. It's difficult to defend our struggles while we take full responsibility for the struggles in our schools. It is difficult to, to defend those problems in light of the fact that we are in the educational capital of the world. We need our university leaders to step up. We need them to take responsibility with us for our students. We are announcing tonight a charter of responsibility in which representatives of Harvard, MIT, and Leslie will come together and shout out different areas of focus that they'll take responsibility for in our public schools. We've had good partnership. We've had good programs. Tonight, we announced that we need accountability and responsibility. As a community, we can achieve success for every one of our young people. Thank you for your partnership. Despite Cambridge's image as an increasingly wealthy city, we should remember that our history in the city of Cambridge, our heart and soul, is around fighting for the, vul for the vulnerable. Cambridge has always been a city of underdogs. We continue to fight for the underdog. Cambridge is at a crossroads right now. As we go forward, we need to remind ourselves each day that we cannot slip into a place of individuality and selfishness. We must remind ourselves that 40 to 50 percent of our residents are below 80 percent of median income still as we stand here today. Our high school represents 39 languages in 75 countries. 15 percent of our residents don't have high school diplomas. 30 percent have graduate degrees. Imagine the economic disparity we face. We as a community can decide what we want to look like. It's in our hands. The room tonight is filled with community leaders, filled with business leaders, university leaders, people who have given their whole life to the city of Cambridge. Tonight I took a look at a picture that an old friend of my family sent to me a couple weeks ago. It was a picture of the Raymond Park midgets from 1927. It was a picture of my dad, uh, a bunch of beat up dirty runts from Raymond Park as part of a midget baseball team in the 20s. I looked at the picture and it didn't look too much different than my picture from my Little League team. There was a couple, a couple of Irish kids, a Greek kid, African American kid, a Jewish kid, a French kid. Didn't look that different. And I started to think about the stories my father told me of how he was molded by this community. The same stories that you heard from your families. How they were molded around integrated schools, integrated neighborhoods, teams, being part of efforts that involve people from all different economic backgrounds, races, uh, and, and all parts of the city. My father told me those stories. Will we be able to tell our children those stories? Ultimately, that's the challenge for the city of Cambridge. We can decide what this city will look like. We can do it as we go forward but we must do it as a community. It's in our hands. I look forward to working with the city's leaders. They give so much of their time and effort to the citizenry. I look forward to working with the university partners, our business partners, our community activists, our non-paid volunteers, our nonprofits, our church leaders, and all those who give so much to this city. Divided, these challenges will be insurmountable. 
if we come together as a community, it will be achieved, and the city of Cambridge, 20 years from now and 50 years from now, will still look like that midget picture, and you'll be able to tell your children the same stories that my dad told me. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Mayor Galluccio, for a wonderful tour of a wonderful city. Now I invite you all to join us at a reception uh, to celebrate the city of Cambridge. So let's enjoy it. Thank you again.